It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is John Shirley, screenwriter and author of several books of the John Constantine books, as well as involvement with The Crow and many other things. Hello. Hello, Mike. What have we been up to this year? Uh, well, this year so far I've been working with uh, Mark Tremonti. Uh, Mark's a, a rock star. Uh, that's the simplest way to put it. He was the uh, lead guitarist and co-songwriter of Creed, and then he was the leader of Alter Bridges, uh, both very successful bands, and now he has a, pro a project called Tremonti, and it, he's touring with it right now, and a new album called A Dying Machine. A Dying Machine is a rock opera, and he hired me through my agent to write a novel based on the rock opera, and it's great music. You can find a, a, the song A Dying Machine on YouTube, look for Tremonti and A Dying Machine there, and you can hear that song, and you can tell that it's a science fiction story. Uh, we're just finishing that. I've been working on it for uh, a couple of months with him, mostly on the telephone by email and so on, and I send, you know, chapters and we go over them together. But there is a movie connection. We are taking it out also as a movie project. It's kind of like in the movie selling business, in the script selling business, the project selling business, it can, you can come at it in all these different ways. One of the ways is that you have somebody who has, a, you know, some sort of large reputation and you dated yourself with them, they with you, and you kind of use uh, that who you know situation to get uh, some doors open. You can picture the project. Uh, we're planning to pitch this as a movie and uh, I would hope to be a screenwriter on it. Uh, but that is a peculiar situation. It's not every day that a, that a, a rock star knocks on your door and says, can you write a rock a novel based on my rock opera? And then later on, we're going to take it out through this major agency, very big agencies associated with. That's that's kind of an unusual situation. I can't, I can't really say so. Do that. Wow. <laughs> that's what I've been doing lately, and I'm also I've also been touching up a script that I'm going out with uh, of my own a script of my own called Synthetic, and I have a, a director who is attached to the project, who's done various movies, a guy named Tibor Tagas. He's, he's done um, done a lot of television movies. He's done the movie, the, uh, the Gate movies, which goes back some years. They were uh, high-quality B science fiction films, and, and kind of a cult thing. And he did, uh, he, did a, he did a movie called Spider that's just about a giant spider that uh, was distributed. He did various things. He and I are going out together, and that another case of a partnership helping something happen and we hope synthetics is a science fiction film a relatively inexpensive one but not not super inexpensive it's it's it will probably be a 20 million dollar picture if it gets made uh i can't i don't want to really talk about this the plot much right now we're not ready to do that with people outside the business it has to do with with creatures from another world it has to do with people among us so it does have something you could say it, it is sort of like a, a body snatcher idea but not <laughs> it's hard to explain it's a variant on that except that there's a lot of humor in it it's one of these things that combines humor and adventure um and the characters are funny and uh, the heroes so yeah i mean there's this sort of uh, body snatcher film for our new era with with some comedy and with some you know, sort of like like those movies, like the guys who did um, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh yeah, I love that movie. And they did that, and they did the one about the uh, the alien escaping from Area Fifty One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what was that called? Um, oh, that was actually a pretty cool movie. I think it's an under, underrated science fiction movie. So there's a lot of humor and to go with the, the you know the the scariness and the fiction adventure of it. Um, so it's, it has that kind of flavor to it. That's what synthetics is going to turn out to be. We hope. Very nice, very nice. Which one's really the current bigger challenge for you right now? You know, getting something considered as a movie uh, is, in, like, just me and the director, that's harder. And there's Mark Tremonti has a lot of connection, uh, and, and he has a, a great agent uh, working. So he, that's probably would be easier for them to, to set something up, I would think. I think that this is getting a lot of publicity, the Tremonti Dying Machine Project is already being talked about in Billboard magazine, including my novel, and on uh, MSN, you know, there's a lot of publicity for it. So that probably has a leg up. It has an advantage. Now, what kind of working relationship do you have with us when you are working with other, let's say, directors or even other writers uh, having to bounce back and forth to make a project? Do you prefer to really just 
kind of do your own stuff, your own solo thing, or is it more tough now to work with these guys? I mean, I understand like everyone's got their own thing, their own ideas, but uh, it can be very difficult to agree on one thing. Yeah, but see, it's part of the business to work with people. It's part of the business to develop a movie or a television series. I uh, I worked on Deep Space Nine for a while. I did an episode of that. I worked in a Fox show called DR5. It didn't last a uh, season, but uh, I was a story editor on it. I worked on um, a show called uh, Poltergeist the Legacy. It was a syndicated television show and some other things. All of those things require a committee sort of activity in, in creating the product. Right? There's just no way around it with this unless you're maybe Woody Allen. You know, you're somebody like that. You're an auteur. You're a guy who is the director and the writer, and he has a, a big contract already. You get most anything the least. And there are a few people like that. And somebody like James Cameron, for example, of course, he's his own production company. You know, Spielberg has his own company and distribution. And so that, that's a special case. But most of the rest of us have to uh, work with, with uh, the people at the studio or at the, the television show, you know, on the staff. Hancock. And uh, on that, he, he was apparently, the Will Smith himself was, was making them rewrite the script over and over again. He kept coming up with ideas to say, no, change it to this. And then he would change that the next one and so on. And he had the power to do that because that was in his deal. That was in his contract. And he was uh, a producer as well as a, a star of the thing. So you, he had the ability to drive the writers crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. And I don't know. I don't know. I understand it didn't work out that well. I never actually saw the picture. Maybe it's good. I don't know. I liked it. That's, mm. just, that's just an example, you know, kind of thing you have to you have to go through. Let's say you made a movie like Paranormal Activities, uh, the the original one, right? And, and you know, found footage. The guy just raised some money and used his credit card, and he got some good actors, uh, and he knew how to shoot a thing, get some angles. He knew how to edit, and was able to do all that stuff himself. And he made the thing for remarkably little money, less than a hundred thousand dollars. Actually, I think it was less than fifty thousand dollars. And then they showed it uh, somewhere, and it was just bought. And then they, you know, they did some titling on it and a few other things, maybe an edit or two, and it went into the theaters. That's a big success. That can happen. You've got to have a, a lot of stuff going on in your corner uh, to make that happen. Blair Witch Project was like that and so on. You know, uh, that those things don't don't discount them. But I, I have another friend who made a picture uh, recently more or less the same way. And between you and me and the audience, <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, you, you know, he didn't find people who could actually act. He didn't really have a very good grasp of editing. Special effects were minimal, you know. Uh, the script wasn't very good. <laughs> you, you know, it's all the difference in the world, having all of those eggs in that basket. Uh, when it comes to being hired for a writing project, though, but as you're writing, doing the writing process, do you feel that uh, it's not actually coming from you, even though you're getting hired to 
to do the project, but do you not feel sometimes it's, it's not actually yours that you're, that you're writing for the story, whatever the project is? Yeah, it becomes that way most of the time. But like I said, let's say you partner with somebody who's shown a lot of talent, a lot of talent making a uh, short film. Maybe they got a 10-minute short film that did well at a film festival or something. And they, they've shown that they can tell a story with, with uh, images on a screen. They can tell a story, uh, you know, uh, with editing, all of those things. But they also are able to work, you know, with a low budget. You can more or less work with that guy and pretty much control your story as long as he agrees or she agrees to shoot the thing. But that's a special thing. You've got you've to gotta find those people. You can't just work with the first person you come across unless you're lucky. You, you've got to go out there and look for somebody with some real talent who wants that to take that next step. And they have a reel that they can show that demonstrates they have that ability. Those people are out there. Um, oftentimes, there are some good actors who are like been a couple of years in a drama program at a college. You know, that's maybe worked in some local theater, and uh, you find people who actually know how to read a line, and you can make things happen without without all that oppression. As long as it works, it's it, the thing, when it's finished works, it works. You know, people, it, 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 there, there are a lot of examples. People get carried away saying, by God, this story works. And it, they did it for very little money and these people came out of the blue. That can happen. That's the only way you can control it unless you become a super famous director. Otherwise, you're just selling your script to somebody. Um, and I'm not saying don't do that, do that too. And it, it, it can be good to do that. Um, it, can be, it can be bad or it can be good. Are you selling your script to somebody? You're just going to have to face up to working with people, taking their notes and, and letting them uh, pull some of the strings. You know, you're just going to have to accept it in your typical distribution deal. A lot of films and, and TV series, uh, they do fail for, some of them fail for a lot of reasons, but do you think one in particular, do you think time management could be a, a big factor as well? Well, Time management is critical. Uh, if you, you know, uh, if you're talking about the time that of production rather than pacing in the story. That as well as the writing, you know, in between. Time it takes to get a thing finished and shot and, and on the screen. Yes. If that's what you're talking about, well, that is critical. Yeah, you, you know, you and and it comes usually from experience. You can't you kind of do it out of the blue very well. A lot of times people take a long time to make their first independent film. But if you're talking about television, yeah, you, you, you know, the people involved have to be ready to be uh, to work in a prolific way. They have to turn out those pages. They have to do the notes quickly. They have to show up at that meeting. Woody Allen said 50% of success is showing up. you gotta, you got to be there uh, on time and ready. Um, and then I mean, you can't whine about it. Especially if it's television, you can't whine about, oh, I, I haven't got a church yet, I can't do this. Oh, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you're gone. Wow. And so, you know, and got to have professional people who, who are used to working under pressure and on schedule in television. That's what they do. They have to have those props have to be in that studio at the right time. And, but that's why you use union prop people, you know, and you use that, who knows what they're doing. You can get people outside and get things done. It, it does happen, and people do shooting in non-union state, but union people are, are, are usually going to be more reliable. They'll have a reputation, and, and, and you'll know that you can depend on them. Go ahead and plug in anything that you want to promote, your, your current projects, uh, as well as any release dates. Uh, what, what, what else can we expect and so forth? Well, the Tremonti thing... Um, that is coming, and uh, his album is coming out in June. He's hoping to do a first day preliminary printing of the book. That's just like a small printing for his fans and for the album. And then, uh, it, but it's also being um, it's also being sent to major publishers. And you know that'll take probably six months, maybe, come out as a book, and that's moving pretty quickly for a book. So that's one thing that's happening. And uh, I've got another. A movie project, or at least a screenplay called um, Time Warrior that I did with Stefan Bugaj. Um, that's something we're going to hit, start hitting people with pretty soon. Haven't yet. Bugaj and I used to work on um, a Telltale Games for a while, which, you know, it's just a well known video game company. I've done work in video games too. And there you have it, everybody. That is screenwriter, author John Shirley.